Good evening, Monarch Nation, and welcome to another edition of Sports Talk with Rags here in Season 4, Episode 19, and here tonight with it being a Monday and having a Monarch alum on the podcast. It's Monarch Monday on Sports Talk with Rags, and we are honored here to have the new ODU men's head basketball coach, Mike Jones, with us. Mike, how you doing this evening? I'm doing great. I'm doing great, Mark. Thank you for having me. I appreciate this opportunity. Oh, yeah. No no problem. Appreciate your time. And, uh, hey, so let's uh, let's start at the beginning. I mean, uh, tell the listeners out there when you were growing up there in the uh, Maryland, D.C. area and going to uh, DeMatha, did you play all sports or were you just uh, solely uh, playing basketball there uh, through high school? Well, I wish I would have played golf because that means I'd be a better golfer now. Um, <laughs> no, I, I I focused on basketball. I did run track, uh, and I played a little bit of football when I was younger. But uh, basketball, by the time I got to high school, basketball was the sport that I threw my all into and my all behind. I was a basketball junkie. Used to read all the basketball magazines, watch every bat possible game I could. Um, basketball definitely got the uh, – Got the fire burning in me, and uh, you know the competitive side of me was fostered in the game of basketball. So, right, yes, and then also like uh, we've uh, we've talked before. Last time when you came on over the phone, I mean, my brother-in-law is a graduate of Bishop McNamara, and um, you know my uh, oldest nephew is currently a senior there at Gonzaga. So definitely with uh, being family with them, I know how competitive the uh, the Catholic League is up there, especially around the game of basketball. Yeah, since I left the math, I've had to kind of get rid of all the biases I had versus you know our counterparts. And obviously two great programs you mentioned amongst the other great programs in the DMV and, you know, that and, and the 757, I plan to be recruiting a lot from, you know, the schools in this area and the Norfolk area and then also uh, up in the D.C. area. So with that being said, I got to like everybody now. So. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And then also, uh, you know, what about uh, your time not only at uh, DeMatha, but after you were done playing, you know, coming back as an assistant and uh, being head coach uh, there at uh, DeMatha before you uh, got the opportunity to uh, be an assistant there at Virginia Tech and then uh, and then DeMatha there in August 2023, recognizing you here with uh, naming the court after you. Yeah, that was, that was pretty cool. Um, you know, other than, you know, getting my dream job at Old Dominion, um, I would say, especially in the last year, uh, that 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 honor of having my name put on the court at DeMatha is something that, you know, that place will be there long after we're all gone. So um, having my name on that court really means something to myself, uh, means something to my family because of the Jones name being on it. And then I know it's cliche, but I do really truly share that with all the guys that I coach with and all the players that play for us. Um, and it was so great to see so many of them come back and celebrate that, that, that honor of putting the name on the court. So, you know, it was kind of like a reunion and, uh, it, it was pretty special. Yes. And then, I mean, you, uh, you were a graduate of the math and then, you know, had the opportunity to, uh, coach there and, you know, but, uh, you know, also with your experience with, uh, Coach in there at Team USA, did you always, you know, hey, when my time's up at DeMatha, you know, I would like to get into the uh, college ranks? Or did you know Coach Young there with the opportunity of being a tech assistant? Well, I think, you know, the, the, the way it goes. So I stopped playing. Uh, I almost stopped playing a year earlier to go be an assistant coach uh, for Coach Wooten at DeMatha. Um, I decided to play one more year, uh, and then at the end of that year, I decided to hang my shoes up and, and come on back over from across the water and, and start my coaching career. And to be honest with you, I mean, 
Coach Wooten was a, like Superman to us. Like right. we thought he was going to coach forever. Right. Uh, so my intent originally was, hey, I'll coach at the math for a couple of years with Coach Wooten, and then he'll help me get a college job and, you know, my career will take off. Yeah. Uh, but once he let it be known that he wasn't going to be coaching much longer, um, that opportunity, right place, right time, uh, me being named the head coach. Uh, after the first few seasons, I kind of sank my feet in a little bit, sat back and, and realized that the impact that myself and my coaches were having on young people, uh, to be able to do it at a place like Damatha with the prestige that comes along with that, like we fully embraced everything that came along with being the coaches at Damatha High School. So I pretty much put the dream of being a college coach out of my mind Mm. I was like, hey, like this is this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm a very faith filled person and I I pretty much had come to grips with that was what my mission was. That was what I was supposed to be doing. Um and I was very content with that. Um I was happy. And then <laughs> come twenty twenty one, uh it's the end of when well, actually not the end, but it's during COVID. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we had an undefeated season at Damatha, but there was kind of the uncertainty of what the next season was going to be, like what was going on. So, um, and I was literally just named the national team coach again. Mm -hmm. Uh, like we were literally on a USA zoom where I was announced to the players that were in our pool mm -hmm. as the head coach. And while I was on that zoom, my phone was ringing and it was Mike Young from Virginia tech. So. Obviously, I was on the Zoom. I didn't answer the call, but when I got <laughs> off, I listened to his message. He asked me to call him back. Uh, I honestly thought that he was calling to ask me about one of the guys that had coached with me before because he had an opening on his staff. And that young man, Corey McCray, who's actually an assistant at Boston College now, mm. uh, I thought that he was calling to basically ask about him joining his staff. Mm -hmm. So literally in my mind, I'm, I've got it teed up. Everything I'm going to say about Corey, I'm going to try to do my best to help Corey get this job. And uh, he like literally went straight in. He was just like, hey, I want to offer you associate head coach at Virginia Tech. And yep. like before I could say anything, like he was just like, you know, like, <laughs> coach, are you there? And I was like, <laughs> yeah, like because it was out of nowhere. Uh, right. And uh, yeah, I guess the rest is history <laughs> at this point. Yes, and uh, you know, not only ACC, but uh, also being part of Hokey basketball there when they won, you know, uh, uh, ACC tournament tournament championship. Yeah, I mean, that was first one ever. I'm literally sitting in my office at my house now. We're packing everything up. So literally, the picture okay. from that team. Nice. Um, the first one ever in Virginia Tech history. Uh, I'm so proud to be a part of that. And, you know, the young men that were on that team, but obviously the coaches uh, led by Coach Young, um, that is something that, again, like the name on the floor, that will never be able to be taken away. Something that I know I will always remember. And being the first at Virginia Tech, you know, the Hokie fans will always remember. Right. Yes. And then, uh, you know, also building your resume and, uh, you know, going to be an assistant there at uh there at maryland i mean that was that was probably being like uh going back home there with uh with being a student at damatha being a being a coach at damatha and now being an assistant there at uh there at maryland there right down the street there at college park absolutely i mean it was a it was a dream come true for that because that was the team i grew up rooting for and the reason why I played at DeMatha was because of Adrian Branch, who taught me how to play. And he was a superstar at DeMatha. And that's around the time I really started paying attention to high school and college basketball. So uh, me being able to go and coach at the University of Maryland uh, with a tremendous coaching staff led by Kevin Willard. Um, the, again, that was like, I, I could not ask for a better opportunity. Right, right. And then, uh, you know, uh, March, March 1st here, uh, you know, uh, 2024, you know, I know that, uh, you, uh, 
shot me a text, you know, and, uh, you know, that uh, just tell the listeners here of just, uh, you know, how you and uh, Stacy felt here with uh, coming to Norfolk and having it be official and be the second Monarch alum here to lead the men's basketball program. Yeah, so obviously I've, I've made it very well known. Once I left the Matha to go to Virginia Tech, it was my dream to be the head coach at ODU. Um, definitely was a dream of mine, a uh, goal of mine. I was rooting for everybody, but I was hoping that, you know, whenever the day came that Coach Jones, Jeff Jones, uh, decided to retire, uh, that I would have loved to have been the person to follow behind him. So uh, things kind of happened fast. Uh, I remember we played at Rutgers on Sunday, I think the 25th, um, when I happened to drive up instead of being with the team because I was recruiting the night before. Mm-hmm. So literally we beat Rutgers. I get in my car and my phone starts ringing about these rumors of there being a press conference and coach Jones retirement. Mm-hmm. Um, the next day, Monday the 26th, he does retire. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next day, Tuesday the 27th, I have an interview. Um, we played the 28th uh, at home and the following morning, Thursday the 29th, uh, I had another interview, a follow-up interview at 7.30 a.m. And at the end of that call, uh, Dr. Uh, Selig and President Hemphill uh, offered me the job. And I'm pretty sure I did not let Dr. uh, Dr. Selig finish talking. I said yes. (laughs) Um, And, you know, literally sitting in the same room, I was, it was via Zoom, uh, sitting in the same room. And when I turned my computer off, I walked upstairs. My wife was uh, in our bedroom and uh, she knows how much I wanted this. So she's looking at me, looking for some (laughs) indication. And again, neither one of us was expecting like a job offer that day. It was just part of the process that we had to go through. And I walked in and I looked at her and I I said, like, literally, we're moving to Norfolk. And she was like, get out of here. (laughs) I was like, yeah, like they just offered me the job. So uh, she could not be more happy. I could not be more happy. My family could not be more happy. Um, This, you know, truly is a dream come true. Right. And, hey, uh, you know, just when we talk about here, March 1st and the opportunity here, we just have uh, a former teammate and one of your assistants here. Let's, Let's bring in Monarch alum and Odell Hodge here to the uh, here to the episode. Odell, how you doing this evening? I'm good. How you doing, Mark? Hey, Thanks I'm for having doing, me on. Yeah, sure, no problem. I uh, appreciate you uh, you coming on, and I know that uh, you and Mike not only being on the same staff, but also also being uh, being teammates. So, Mark, I, I gotta I gotta jump in here. So, right. Odell and I have a very like we're, we're truly brothers and our relationship is a little different. So we're going to do the best job we can tonight to not let that side of our relationship come out in this interview. Right. Like we tease each other a lot. We get on each other's case. Um, right. We're going to try not to do that. Right. Odell. We're gonna... <laughs> That's correct. <Yes>. Right on. <laughs> we're going to do our very best. Mark. Right. <laughs> well, well, you know, Mike, let's, uh, let's start with you. I mean, uh, you know, here playing for uh, playing for Oliver Purnell and uh, being recruited here to be part of of Monarch basketball. How was how was that there when uh, you were what junior senior there at uh, there at Dematha and having the opportunity that hey I want to play this game at the D one level. Yeah. So the cool thing for me was. Um, I was Coach Pinnell's first recruit. Oh, uh, PD Sessoms, David Harvey, and Mario Mullen were all committed and signed to come to ODU uh, in the fall. Um, I did not get uh, recruited until the spring because Coach Pinnell was at Radford and Coach Pete Strickland was at VMI and Coach Tick Price, he was at Virginia Tech. And I was being recruited by all three of them. So when they all came together on the same staff at ODU, to me, that was a sign that that was the place I needed to be. Um, So 
Tom Young had signed the other three. And so I was fortunate enough to be able to join that class. And then Mario delayed his entrance for a year. But I mean, that was, you talk about coming in with some good guys, like being able to come in with those names, like that was, that was special. And again, they did this, you know, we're family and, you know, Odell and I are going to do everything I can to get that family vibe back at ODU basketball. Right. And, and Odell, I mean, when you came on, you know, on a previous episode, you know, uh, you talked about there with uh, being in high school there at uh, Martinsville and also being being recruited there by uh, Radford and VMI. Uh, similar story to what Mike just talked about, right? Correct. That's correct. So, you know, in my situation, it was easier because I went on a trip and a recruiting visit to Liberty University. And that was great. You know, it was my first time ever going on a uh, visit and they treated me well. So my next visit two weeks later was here in Norfolk. Mm -hmm. And like I told you before, and I've told this story plenty of times, uh, Coach Pernell got me out there on the ocean front. You know, I'm a country <laughs> boy from Martinsville. We have like, you know, a few stoplights there. And now it's improved a little bit. Right. Uh, but I got me out there on that ocean front water view. And I told him, I was like, you know what? I need to go back home and talk to my parents, but uh, you got me. I'm going to commit you know, the water and just the vibe, just the family vibe here. Uh, dealing with players like, you know, Coach Jones. Now, I got to call him Coach. I got to figure out what I'm going to call him. I, I <laughs> promise I wouldn't I wouldn't tease him, right? But I have to show, but I show, I have to show respect in front of other players, you know, because um, that's something that uh, we, we're going to try to build here and you know, we have to find a nickname, Coach Jones, Coach. Uh, I have no problem doing that because it is, and we have to set that uh, set that measuring stick for our players. Uh, but having having Coach Jones on the team, having PD Sessions, uh, David Harvey was there, knowing Mario was coming because uh, we played so many times against each other in the AAU. The Parker brothers from Atlanta, Georgia, uh, we was loaded. That freshman class was good to pair up with the rest of the guys. We knew right away it was going to be special with um, the Kevins, the two Kevins, Larkin and Swan. Uh, that team was uh, – Keith Jackson was on that team, Donna Anderson. We was good my freshman year. Yeah, yes. And, uh, you know, uh, Mike, I mean, uh, there, with, there with your freshman year, I mean, Ricardo, Ricardo Leonard, uh, MVP there of the CAA tournament and uh, – you know, get the opportunity of playing uh, playing Kentucky there in the NCAA's. Yeah, uh, I mean, it, it's it's crazy to think about it because I really don't think that Odell and I are old at, at all. Um, we definitely, uh, you know, we don't look at the kids like they're our sons. We look at them like they're our little brothers. But, you know, there was no social media back when we came. Um, and to be able to look, go on Facebook now, and see how well Ricardo's doing in his life. He had a great career playing overseas and his life uh, living overseas and being able to connect with, you know, Alon Wright was on those teams too. And Alon reached out to me the other day, just saying congratulations. Donald Grant, who played at ODU and then transferred out, but I've known him because of the DMV basketball family has reached out. Like just so many guys that, you know, just it's, it's amazing that social media was able to do it. But playing Kentucky, uh, you know, that's the Kentucky team that lost to Duke on the Christian Leitner shot. Right. Um, you know, and we had them, I won't say we had them beat, but we were in the game until there was like two minutes left. And we wound up losing by, you know, double figures. But it was like a two-point game, a one-possession game, very late in that game. And that was literally my first taste of March Madness as a player. And uh, it's addictive. <laughs> it's addictive and you want to be a part of it. And now as coaches – it's our job to get us back there as soon as we possibly can. Right. And uh, Odell, I mean, when you uh, got involved here with uh, being, being part of the Monarchs, I mean, you were, you were tournament MVP and, you know, just, uh, just had a great career there as a, as a Monarch, Monarch player. And, uh, you know, got the opportunity of, uh, you know, uh, having your jersey retired. So, how does that feel to be to be back here, part of the coaching staff? 
it means everything. And it tells you uh, a lot about Coach Jones and his process. And it's what we've been talking about since we since I joined on tonight, right? It's that family asset fear. It's everything about it. You know, my success came because of, of my teammates. You know, I had great teammates throughout my career at ODU here. Um, and we're going to try to do the same thing when we're building this, um, this team and, and continue to go forward. Um, you have to build great characters and you have to be able to sacrifice a lot. And I tell you, you know, Coach, uh, PD, David, them guys sacrifice a lot to fit myself and Mario in. And at the end result, we won a lot of basketball games. We was good because there was no egos. You know, we all checked our egos at the door. And then, you know, in 1984, when I got hurt, it paid it forward. Now, I'm not going to say that because I got injured, it was the best thing. But in a way, it was because everything that I just said, it culminate into them going on and having a unbelievable great season. And I was generally, you know, a lot of people like, oh, how do you feel about that? You really wish they would lose. Are you crazy? Mm-hmm. No way. Like, we are family. And, you know, all things happen for a reason. And, you know, like I said before, maybe I was getting a little bit too big for myself. Maybe I was getting a little bit uh, thinking that I was the best player in the country. And, you know, I had to take a step back. You just never know how these things work. Uh, but maybe that injury was the best thing for me throughout my whole career because I look at it different. I said it to you before, Mark. Mm-hmm. I have an unbelievable family, um, you know, a wife that's living in Belgium for the moment that will join me pretty soon here. Uh, two boys that's playing this game. You just never know what would happen if, if I didn't get injury. So, you, you know, I don't like to live in regrets or think yeah. about things. Everything happens for a reason. But at the same time, at the same time, we come full circle here, right? It comes full circle because of all them sacrifices that them guys made when I joined and Mario joined and the Parker brothers joined in 92. We had long success. Coach Jones went on and became one of the best coaches in high school basketball history. One of the best recruiters slash assistant or social head coach at Tech and at Maryland. And it comes full circle here uh at ODU and uh I'm just tickled to death that it's because of our relationship over the years brought me back uh because of Coach Jones and I've said it before this is the only place I will left Europe for and I'm just tickled and blessed to be back here. Yes well you know I know that uh I know that my wife uh Elizabeth and I, you know, with uh being season ticket holders and something that I shared uh a text there with uh, Coach Jones. How you know we're just we're just excited here with uh, you guys uh, being um, being p- leading the uh, program, and we're ready to renew and uh, continue to be supporters there of the um, of the basketball team. Looking well, for things. Uh, yeah, go, Mike. Please renew. That's yeah. one. Yeah. So please renew and get some other people to get those season tickets as well. Um, we want there to be a huge, just, I won't even say energy shift, but these young men who persevered through everything they went through last year, but we all acknowledge the fan base persevered through a lot last year. And Odell and I and the rest of the staff, we're literally coming together because we know that our fan base deserves a winner. We know that our fan base expects, you know, because the history of our program has had a lot of winning in it, a lot of championship runs in it, a lot of great players in it um, on both sides, the men's and the women. So we're looking forward to getting to a part where everyone's excited, which we have some of that now, but we need that excitement to turn into ticket sales, into everything, because Chartway is such an incredible home court advantage especially when that place is full. Um, and we want to see that as many times as we can. So make sure you and Elizabeth renew right. and some other people to go ahead and bite the bullet and get those season tickets as well. Right. And, you know, the thing is, is there with your senior year, I mean, Coach Purnell, you know, moves on, you know, yeah. gets, gets on to another, uh, another uh, coaching program. You know, and Coach Capel comes in, and like uh, like Odell 
shared, you know, there in the 94, 95 season, but, you know, one of the, one of the biggest wins there in uh, program history. And you talk about uh, before social media, I mean, with growing up in a military family, I was out in California and, you know, had, couldn't, couldn't see the game till the second overtime, but uh, you know, knocking off, uh, knocking off Villanova there your senior year. Well, I think one of the things that, and this is, I've, I've, I always have felt like giving credit where credit is due is an obvious thing, but making sure people don't forget. So two things with, with that, Jeff Capel came in and literally did not have to do anything for myself, David Harvey and Petey Sessoms. Like we were seniors, we were going out. Different era now because of the transfer portal. But back then, most coaches going into that situation, hey, I'm going to get my guys in here. And no, you don't have to leave, but I'm going to focus on the younger guys that I know I'll coach beyond this year. Coach Cable didn't do that. So um, I've always felt indebted to him because my senior year, our senior year could have gone way differently had there been another coach coming in there. So I owe him the world for that. Uh, God rest his soul. That's one. And then two, the biggest thing that I think Coach Capel deserves a tremendous amount of credit for is you got to realize, like, big fella here yeah. was one of the best players in the country. Right. And his sophomore year, excuse me, my sophomore year, his freshman year, his sophomore year, my junior year, like, we realized, like, in order for us to be really good, we got to play through Odell. Odell's got to touch the ball. We got to throw it inside. Nobody can guard him. And to basically prepare an entire offseason in the beginning of our season to play through Odell, he gets hurt. And now we totally had to change the way we played. And it wasn't easy at first. But for Coach Capel to take such a imposing, impactful, and dominant player and have that literally taken away from him, and still figuring out how to get us to be as successful as we were. Like, I, I just don't understand how anybody can look at that. But, like, Coach Cable deserves all the credit uh, for for that. I mean, that was an amazing job by him and his staff. Mark Klein, Bobby Collins, Jim, Jim Corrigan, those guys did an, a, a tremendous job with us. Right. And um, Odell, I mean – Honorable mention, they're all American by the AP there in there in '97 and in '97, you know, you guys went to the tournament, lost a lost a close one there to uh, there to New Mexico, but uh, definitely continued continued to uh, win here through your time at Old Dominion. Absolutely, um, I think you know at that year it was it was going into my last year. Uh, my focus was to win the CAA championship because we won it two years before when I was injured. Um, and, you know, for me going out, that was the only thing that I have not accomplished at ODU. You know, all the individual awards you can think of, um, you know, scoring over 2,000 points, all that's exciting. But, you know, we are judged by championships, right? So that eluded me, and we had to go in uh, overtime against James Madison. Uh, to win that by four points uh, there at the Richmond Coliseum. And that was cultivate, you know, a lot of my career to get that monkey off my back. And then the NCAA tournament, I waited four years to play in that tournament. And we came up short, and I wish I would play a better game in that game. I picked one of the uh, worst games, uh, last games of the year, to play one of my worst games of my career. Um, but, you know, it comes full circle. You, you can look back on it and say, again, you don't have regrets. I still prepared the same way I've prepared all my life, all my career, even when I went overseas. Uh, it just didn't work out. But, you know, I think we both can say that we had outstanding careers here at Old Dominion. Right. Yes. And, uh, you know, with uh, growing up here and uh, going to Western Branch, one of my friends, uh, Kevin Smith, you know, who who ended up going to Old Dominion after we graduated from from Western Branch there in 94, but, uh, you know, there when we were in high school, you know, he's like, he's like rags. He's like, you gotta, you gotta go to scope and see, see Mike and Mike and Petey and, and the team play and here with uh, Odell coming to be, 
coming to be part of the program, but it's uh, great to great to see here you guys uh, coming back and uh, Coach Jones uh, leading the program and and here with uh, his staff. And Mark, uh, let me just add one thing, go, please. Let yeah, me just add yeah, one thing. Ahead. I don't mean to cut you off, but yep. it's it's laid on my mind. I just want to say today it was a great day for us today. Just myself and some of the staff members, some of the other coaches, you know, my colleagues, assistant coaches, we went out today to, you know, walk around to try to meet some of the local um, business owners, restaurants around campus. And we found our way over to Monarch Hall uh, where the human research uh, marketing business is located with, um, you know, our catering company and just walking through that building uh, today listening to the excitement of us coming into the building not asking someone to come to us we taking the time to walk around campus it meant something to them folks in there today and it just gave us all goosebumps and you know we was feeling it and felt that energy and if we didn't know before like we know what it is coach jones myself we know what this means to this university to have us both back with coach jones leading it and, and I'm one of his assistants and honored to have that opportunity to, to help and lead. It was amazing. It was electrifying to be able to walk around campus today. You know, we, we did it 30, 45 minutes and it was great. Got some air, got some exercise, you know, walking around. But that energy that we received today, um, I can tell you right now, it's going to be electrifying at Chartway. Right. Yes. Yeah. And uh, Coach Jones, I mean, I mean, with, uh, getting the job on the first building your staff and and going on the road here to uh you know build build the team i mean have you had time to catch your breath i mean it's it's like non-stop isn't it uh, but that's the way that's what we signed up for right uh you know i, I know i mentioned we had a we had a couple of things we had to do immediately but we had a 30-day plan that we're coming to the end of it and I feel like we're right where we're supposed to be uh, with regard to that. And then, uh, you know, at the end of this month, we'll start our 90 day plan. You know, we'll have two 90 day plans going into basically November uh, as we get ready to play our first game. So uh, this first 90 days is going to be incredibly important, um, you know, because this 30 days has been all about roster staff, you know, trying to wrap our minds around what the next 90 days need to look like. Uh, so we'll literally we'll meet again tomorrow morning, um, as we did last Saturday uh, or two Saturdays ago now, um, trying to get ready for the portal to open up. Uh, we'll get ready tomorrow with where we are with our roster and then planning out the next 90 days. And, uh, you know, whether our heads are still spinning, whether we haven't caught our breath, it doesn't matter. Um, we're doing this for some of the best fans that you'll find on any college university in this country and uh we are very 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 proud to represent them and uh we're gonna work our rear ends off to make sure that we give them a winner yes and the thing is is uh you know they're in the early 2000s you know they're the caa championship was between old dominion and vcu you know a few times but when you guys were at old dominion and the caa tournament was down to ODU versus JMU, and and here with the Sun Belt, both schools are back in the same conference. Yeah, and, and Coach Byington taking the job at Vandy today, so there'll be a new head whistle uh, in in Harrisonburg, and we look forward to that. I'm sure it'll be somebody that we already know um, that is very qualified and capable. But I mean, that is going to be a rivalry, and all that animosity and just competitive spirit I have for the McNamara's and the Gonzagas. Back at the math, uh, yeah, we'll hold that same energy uh, in reserve for JMU. So, yeah, yeah well, uh, Odell, uh, appreciate you coming on. Any uh, any final thoughts? No, I just want to second what Coach Jones said. It's going to be electrifying to you know renew that rivalry with JMU. I haven't been to Harrisonburg since 1997, so I'm um, I'm looking forward to going back there and and also some of the outstanding uni universities, uh, institutions that we go, we will see uh, this upcoming season. Uh, I just want the fans to know that Coach Jones and the rest of our staff, we're going to build something special here. here. Uh, please be patient with us. 
Uh, we won't be patient with ourselves. We know what's ahead of us. Um, I'm, I'm sure we won't be patient, but be patient with us. It's going to be electrifying. It's going to be fun. Uh, you're going to enjoy coming back. Um, and um, we're just excited. I wish the season would start tomorrow, but we have to build it the right way. And uh, we'll do that. And um, fans will be proud. And uh, we can make Monarch Nation uh, live and uh, reverence again. So yeah. Thank you, Mark, for having us on, Mark. Sure, you're welcome. And uh, Coach Jones, I, I want to give uh, Michael Byers uh, a yes, shout out for uh, yes, giving me the encouragement for, hey, you know, now that you're back from vacation, give uh, give Coach Jones a, a call and he'll make uh, he'll make time to to come on. So appreciate well, well, that. Mike, Mike, Byers, Mike Byers is 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 unofficially on our coaching staff. Okay. So, okay, and he knows his role too. Uh, mm -hmm. We've had many conversations. He is literally he's going to be part time PR and the other part uh, alumni director. Uh, okay. He's got his hands a little bit over every era of Old Dominion basketball. And uh, when I know I want to see some some former Monarch players, Mike Byers is who I call on the phone, and uh, you know he's already connected us with a lot of very 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 important people uh, that will. You know, we're hoping that will contribute to our success uh, beyond just the basketball part, but what happens uh, behind closed doors and off the court. So, uh, yeah, we 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 love Mike. Mike Mike is I call Mike my 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 my, my guy because I didn't actually play with Mike Box, mm -hmm. but the summer that Mike was coming in is the summer I was going out, and we spent a lot of time uh, that summer together and. I did kind of feel like him, Kyle Bowler, uh, and the other guys in that class, Reggie Bassett, Skip Youngblood, that myself, David Harvey, Peter, we kind of took them under our wings because we were proud as to what Old Dominion was growing into, and we wanted to make sure we were literally – Odell already had the keys, but we gave them seats in the car with Odell to make sure that the program was going to be able to sustain itself. And – uh as we're recruiting now, that's exactly the way we're looking at this. Uh, we've got some guys that are going to return from last year's team, and we're bringing in a lot of new, fresh talent uh, that fits Old Dominion. Uh, great people, yes. great character, uh, young men that are going to play their hearts out, um, and people are going to truly enjoy watching. And, uh, again, I, I, I cannot wait. This – when you, it's an understatement to say we're excited. Um, whatever is beyond that, that's what we are. We cannot wait. Yes, and I know that uh, Kevin and I will definitely have a foursome there in the uh, basketball fundraiser. And uh, Elizabeth, she's never been to uh, one of those basketball banquets, so we'll definitely have to get a table when that we gotta, comes. We got to sell both of those out right. too. All right. The season tickets, <laughs> sell out the golf tournament, sell out right. the tip off dinner. All like, right. I like we all the energy that we're pouring into this program, yes. we're also going to feed off the energy that we're getting from the fans. And obviously there's no better display of that energy and that's that support. So yes, please. Yes. We'll see yeah. you there. Yes. Well, hey guys, I I appreciate you guys uh coming on here and um you know, uh, sharing your time here of your basketball journey and definitely being part of Monarch Nation as a student athlete and now and now coming full circle here with uh, leading the program. So appreciate you guys, you guys coming on and thanks again. Yes, sir. All right. So Mark, thanks, man. We sure really thing. It. So all the listeners out there, get ready here to, uh, you know, be part of uh, Monarch and Lady Monarch basketball here uh, this year. And uh, let's go Monarchs. Go Monarchs. Let's we go. up. Right. We are up.